Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're gonna to go over something that a viewer asked a question about, how to make text-based jewelry. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Let's get started. Okay, so for the first thing you have to do is you gotta get Blender up and running, and then you're gonna do Shift A, and you're gonna go down to where it says Add Text. You're gonna add some text, and then press the Tab key to edit the text. Hit the Backspace key to get rid of the word text, and then just type in whatever text you want. Here, I'm using Christine, just an average name that I'm using. On the right-hand side, you can see I'm expanding some of the tabs. These tabs are for selecting fonts and uh, picking the, uh, the extrusion rate and the fill rate of the font that we were going through. So I'm just going to pick up uh, just a whatever kind of a font here, just an arbitrary font. I can't really tell what they look like here, but uh, if you can, you can go into your Explorer or your viewer and then you can see what fonts you want to use. So I've got this here and I'm just going to hit the extrude button and make that a little bit thicker. I'm going to give it some dimensions uh, you know, just until you get to the point where you're, you're happy with it just play with some of the settings here and I encourage you to just play with each of the settings to find out you know how they all work and what they all do so I'm just going to keep messing around until I get Christine the way I want it to look and once I'm happy with the word Christine just about there I think that's a good we'll move on to the next pot so now that I have the uh, name that I want and the way I want it there's a couple things I want to do to it you can see that on the H the R and the N we've got some open letters in the bottom so you know that's something we're gonna have to mess with but uh, let's get this centered and oriented to a position that we like and with your item selected, you can right click on it and then convert it to a, uh, a mesh. And you want to work with a mesh. You don't want to work with text. Text is a, is, a, is a set of curves. So make sure that you're working with your nameplate converted to a mesh. Then we're going to center it in the screen. Once it's centered in the screen, I can start making some changes to it. One change is typical of a nameplate. Usually they curve up on the ends and you'd put like a chain on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the bending tool, which is um, with the object selected and in edit mode, you will select um, shift W on your keyboard, but you have to do this in a, in a specific way. To use the bending tool, what you need to do is keep your cursor or, or you need to keep the center in the middle of the screen. You can see where the X is in the middle. And you put your cursor or your mouse on one side or the other of it. And then you're going to press Control W and then move your mouse up or down. And then you can see how we can bend it. Don't forget that when working with the uh, Shift W or the Bend tool, you always have to be in edit mode and you should have a whole lot of, of uh, faces and vertexes in your mesh model because the more you have your, your mesh, the more faces and vertices you have in your mesh, the easier your object will bend. Here you can see I'm adding some blocks and these blocks are to take up the bottom opening areas in the letters N where the R and the I meet as well as the H. So I'm just going to size those in a way where they kind of touch the model and kind of take up that space, but they don't show up as a letter. It kind of looks like a little indentation. So you can tell they're supposed to be there to help support it, but you can tell it's also not the word. Then I'll use Shift D to duplicate once I'm done aligning these, and then I'll move another object over. So here you can see I've duplicated, and I'm going to move it over to the H. I'm going to put it in line, and then just rotate it along the Z axis when I get it where I want and just kind of make it look as good as possible. So that's shift, or that's, that's rotate the R key, and then Z to rotate it along the Z axis only. Don't forget shift D is duplicate for duplicating an object. So now that I've got those blocks, I'm gonna hit Control J, and I'm gonna group all of the, everything together. So my three blocks and the, 
the word Christine are all grouped together. Now I have to make the little jump rings that go on the ends, uh, the sides of the piece where you would normally attach a chain. Don't forget that you always, you know, on a pendant like this, a named pendant, you're, you're going to usually have a chain attached to it. So here you can see I'm just placing my jump ring that I created over the letter E and I'm just making it, you know, just a little bit larger here but small enough so it doesn't interfere with the word Christine. Once I get that where I want it, I will duplicate it and then move it over to the other side of the pendant. So knowing that those are a perfect line, now I can grab the jump ring and the nameplate or the word Christine, grab those and then press Control J to group them together. So here you can see I'm selecting all three objects using the shift key and the mouse and then Control J joins everything together. So now I've created this pendant with the name Christine on it. Once your model's done and you're happy with it, don't forget to save it. So I'm going to save this as a Blender file and I'm just going to throw it in a new folder and uh, I will save it for later because I want to import this again when I'm done. So now that we've made a Christine with an, a curve in it that you would see on a typical nameplate pendant, let's make one that's vertical. And here we're going to add the text. We're going to go into edit mode, delete the word text, and then we're going to type in Christine again. But we're going to do this by pressing C and then enter and then H and then enter R, enter, so that we're writing basically down a vertical line. And I'm going to use the same name. I'm going to use Christine as my example. And you can see that uh, just get it the way you want it. Don't worry about text. We can go back and we can kind of get this centered by going to the text utility here on the right hand side. That little A represents the text tool and we're going to scroll down until we find the, uh, the place where we can align the text via the center of it. And now that the name is centered vertically, now we can go and adjust the spacing for the line spacing. Just keep scrolling down until you find line spacing. And there it is. We can adjust the line spacing of how we want it to appear. Now, obviously, I'm using lowercase letters. Um, if I had used all uppercase letters, I probably could have made this work a little bit better. Um, in, in this particular case, we're going to do something a little bit different to this vertical pendant. And I'm just playing with the spacing, just making sure that I get it kind of where I want it. And then I'll adjust all the other attributes for the font, such as the extrusion. And you can either type in a value or click and hold in that box and scroll left and right and uh, get yourself you know, a little number. So now we're just going to pick a new font. What font do we want to use? I'll probably end up using the same font. And we'll just take a look at that. And once I've got the font selected, I'm going to go play with the fill of the characters. And like I said, just play with the depth and the, the fill length and the resolution of each of these characters just so you can get the font to look the way you want it. And again, you can use whatever font is in your font library on your computer. Windows, they're in the system directory, and so is the Mac. So just go into your library file in your Mac and you'll find the fonts in the system folder in your PC and uh, choose whatever font you want and then you can play with how it looks. Uh, a lot of places, uh, a lot of designs for nameplates and things like that, bracelets, use common script and uh, here at least we can do whatever we want. Which is kind of nice because if you do text jewelry or text-based jewelry you can make whatever the customer wants, you know, even getting free fonts online and sometimes that's where I'll go to find the right font. Now for purposes here we run into an issue obviously where there's a lot of spacing in between the letters so I have to add some kind of a frame to the underside of this so I'm going to go to the add menu or shift a and then add a cube and then I'm going to size that cube to the length of the nameplate um, here you can see I'm just going to center my nameplate onto the uh, center of the screen so I set the origin to middle of volume and then I select the uh, nameplate again and I move it to the middle. Then I'll grab the cube again and I'll adjust it to the height of my name tag. Now here I can go and make any little changes I want to the back side of the frame. Of how thick I want it, how thin I want it. You can just play with the sizing 
uh, either X, Y, Z, or all until you get it to the way you want it. So here's about how I want it to look. I, it's not great, it's not perfect, but I'm just showing you here you can do it vertically also. Once I'm happy with that, I need to uh, merge these together. And uh, once uh, here, actually, I'm going to add in a jump ring. So before I get ahead of myself, let's add in a new jump ring to the top. And that's where our bail will hang from. Um, you can actually turn that either way you want. You can turn it vertically or uh, up and down the Z axis if you want to hang a chain right through a larger jump ring, per se. You know, some of us jewelers will use different forms of bales. I'm making this so that I could use a common bale on it if I wanted to. I will grab each of the objects and I'm going to try to merge them together but you have to convert the name to a mesh because the name obviously is not a mesh it's actually a series of curves so before you forget to do that select your text right click on it and convert it to a mesh your objects have been converted to meshes then you can go ahead and control J and merge them all together so now I have these three objects that are actually all now one and that's kind of how I want the name tag to look at again this is a it's a pennant that's going to hang vertically so I have the jump ring at the top which can accept the bail and I'm going to go ahead and save this out now as a blender file and probably just call this Christine 2 and save the file like that. Okay guys, so I'm really not going to jump into this one, but I'm just showing you here real quick um, how creative you can be by creating customized jewelry. And for this instance, I'm using the Christine pendant that we made in the first part, and then I'm adding like three children to that to make like a mother's pendant. So you can get really creative with this. and get a good idea of how to make something that nobody in the world makes. If you want to make like a one-of-a-kind piece for somebody, this is kind of the way to do it. And that's kind of why I like working with Blender and Myelagoo and Epix 3D printers. And last but not least here, we're going to do a ring. So I'm going to hit the Shift A, I'm going to add in a torus. And I'm going to start with a generic basic ring. And I'm just going to give that torus some properties. I'm going to increase the number of vertices in it so that it's smoother and that way I've got a better um, ring to work with when I 3D print it with my Allegu or Epix. So let's get that all squared away. And I'm just going to make the general shape of what I want it to look like, about how thick I want the band to be, and just consider this like a comfort fit wedding band, something like that. And once I get the shape and size the way I want it, then I can extrude it along the z-axis. So there you can see I rotated it and I'm going to be working along the, uh, the X and Y axis for most of my uh, modeling here. So you can see I'm making it a much wider band. You know, normally this would look like what, about a seven or eight millimeter wide band. And now we're going to add some text and we're going to add in another name. I'm just going to use my name, Peter, and I'm just going to set it up in uppercase so that uh, I've, I can put a name on the ring itself. There's my text, kind of happy with it. I'm going to go into the text properties and we're going to grab a different font. And the font seems to be readily available, so we'll use that one. Doesn't matter which one you want to use, pick one that you like. I'm going to make the text a little bit thicker and uh, maybe give it a little bit more depth. Once you're happy with your font, I'm just going to move mine out of the way. The next thing I need to do is figure out how to get this on the perimeter of the ring, but I'm going to be a little creative here because I'm going to actually take out a section of the ring much like you would do on a channel set band. To do this, I'm going to take this cube and I am going to shrink it down to a width that I'm happy with. So I like that there. Now I'm going to make sure it's in the middle of the ring. We're going to size it down along the Z axis and I'm going to bring it up and that's going to be my cutout. But I can't cut out a cube that has no extra vertices. So here you can see I'm adding in a circle and that circle is a curve object and that's the curve object I want that cube or that rectangle to follow. 
Now, I have to add in a bunch of vertices to this. You're going to use the loop tools. Unfortunately, using the loop tools here, I got carried away, and I think it has something to do with my screen recorder, but I'm going to add in as many loops as I can to that. Then I'm going to go into the properties or the modifiers menu, and I'm going to add in a curve object for the cube. And you can see it bends that rectangle just about the right circumference of the ring. So I can move that up and down with the Z arrow or the blue arrow and then I can pull it any way I want it. And once you have it aligned the right way, and I'm just going to do a forward view on this so I can get this aligned uh, about how I want it. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm just kind of giving you this. Now I have to apply that modifier, so go ahead and apply that modifier. With the modifier applied, I'm going to select the cube and then I'm going to select the ring using the shift key and then I'm going to go to the boolean tool and use difference and you can see it cuts out a nice little flat spot in our ring. The next thing I want to do is I want to take that name and I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to convert it to a mesh and then I am going to get that centered on the screen using the uh, set origin and then sec using shift S to center it in the screen. I'm also going to go and add a modifier to that. We're going to add a curve modifier. I'm going to apply the circle to the name tag Peter and then I'm going to place that where I want it. It's a little too thick so I'll go ahead and hit the S Z key to size it along the Z axis until I get it the way I like. And once it's about where I want it, and it's a little too high, so we have to kind of bring that down. You can size the curve, or you can size the text either way, and go back and play with them. Get them to the point where you're happy with your text the way you like it, and then just kind of move it in place somewhere along the axis so that the name is on the su surface of the ring. Once you're happy with that, hit the apply modifier and then you can go and hit the select the name Peter and then select the ring, hit the union key and the boolean tools and you can join that as one piece. And here you can see what I've made is like a band with a cutout and my name in it. I'm just going to go ahead and save that just so that I can use it later. With the ring I made the way I want it, now I'm just going to import all those models back into Blender and I'm just going to set up a little scene and we're going to do a little rendering here. And I'm going to show you what they look like in like silver or gold so that you can get an idea how the models would look once you're done with them. The next step is to go ahead and 3D print them. So let's take a look at the results of 3D printing on the Elegoo Mars. So I used the castable resin here and I decided to um, print them the way that I designed them in Blender. So I have the Christine name tag with the curve in it and that came out pretty good. Our end caps printed, the word Christine came out perfect. If we add a chain to a, a casted model of that, it's going to look just like it was uh, designed to be. And here's the ring with the, the name indented or embedded into the surface with the cutout. And you can see that printed out pretty well. Both these pieces need to be finished, so you know some sanding to them before they can be cast. But with the castable resin and following the proper instructions and in casting, you can get some great results making name type of text jewelry. Don't be afraid to play with this. I hope you like this video, guys. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber and you want to be subscri subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. If you want to get notified every time I put up a new video, no matter what the subject is, hit the little bell icon. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. 
Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making.